The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. in pro wrestling history. I'm one of your hosts, Noel Harlow Lagrasso, and I'm here with my husband, former WWE, WCW, ECW, TNA superstar, Big Vito Lagrasso, and we are here in the corner of the hurricane. How's everybody doing tonight? What's <laughs> going on? I hope everybody's having a great time. Um, right now, we're preparing for the storm, but of course, you know, hopefully it's a hit or miss. Hopefully it's a miss. Um, sorry that we've been delaying, but, you know, getting ready for the storm and doing stuff. Okay, we're here to present the show for you. Noel, let's get it going. Nope. As you can see, the weather channel's on. Oh, yeah, right? we have the weather right. channel on because we're going to, you know, Hurricane Dorian. Is, Dorian. Dorian is about to whoop us. Whoop us. Whoop us. Oh. So we're kind of just watching that in the background there. But we're here with you guys just hanging out. Okay. Okay. This week in pro wrestling history, we're going to talk about Monday Nitro, August 28th, 2000. Pam Ann Center, New Mexico, Big Vito, not only takes on Jeff Jarrett, I won't say whether you win or lose, but more importantly, Big Vito turns on his best friend, Vince Russo, with one of these kiss of, kiss of death. death. He teams up with Goldberg, and Mr. Russo gets buried in the desert, so... I want to talk about this time in WCW a little bit. I want to talk about Goldberg's streak and run. But more importantly, I want to talk about your friendship with Vince Russo because a lot of people don't know you guys go very, very, very far back. Almost 30 years. We're almost 30 years, almost guys. 30, 30 years. years. And they've been um, always been friends, always stayed friends, still are best friends. Yes. And no matter... Who did what or who got what held against them? You guys always stayed friends. Yep. Never threw anybody under a bus. Everybody just worked together, especially me. It was, you know, we talked about it and, you know, it's kind of a tough situation because, like, you know, Vince came up the ranks and, you know, he started off in the WWF as a magazine guy, went up to being Vince's right-hand man, going to WCW, TNA, doing all good stuff. You know, at any time they couldn't get the Vince, they all knew I was his best buddy. They always took shit out on me. But I overcame it. I wound up doing my own thing. I wound up doing things. And it's not to say that everybody says, well, Vince got you this. Vince gave me a job in WCW. Okay. But Vince didn't give you your WCW push. Another person actually gave you the push in WCW. That was Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan actually gave you the push in WCW. So that's right. a misconception. And people Very say, good. oh, Russo got you a job, but not really because you didn't get certain positions because you were friends with Vince. Right. But when you talk about my WCW run, a lot of people don't realize I was in there with Goldberg. I was in there with Nash. I was in there with Jared. I was in there with, I was tag team with Booker. I was, you know, um... I did something with Vampiro, and he was on top. I did something with Buff Bagwell. I did something with the Harlem Heat, um, the Harris Brothers, uh, the Chronic. It wasn't like I started out and I was on the bottom. Guys, you know what? My run was successful, you know, and it got derailed because of who was in charge and what was doing what and who was crying to who. Let's we're going to get into that because I sure. want to talk about that time in WCW and I want to give you the opportunity to have the floor and basically speak about that kind of stuff. But what I really want to talk about is, okay, you turned against Vince. You gave him the Italian kiss of death. Yeah. How did you meet Vince Russo? 
at Johnny Rogers School of Professional Wrestling. I broke into business as Skull Von Crush, and Vince was coming in to be a reporter, wanted to go to wrestling school, be a manager. And uh, he just saw the difference between me working out and take, looking at the business from my eyes. And I was a guy who, you know, I took it seriously. To quote Vince's book, I see I did research on this show. Okay, to quote Vince's book, he said the one person out of everybody that he's met in professional wrestling, you are the one person that deserves to make it and deserves accolades out of everyone he's worked with. And he's worked from everybody from The Rock to Steve Austin, yeah. to Goldberg, to everybody you can think of all the way down, Triple H, DX, the whole thing. You're the one person, he says, that you deserve to make it. You deserve the accolades that you get. How does that make you feel? It's very humbling to hear that come from him. And, you know, I wasn't just mentioned in one of his books. I was mentioned in a few of his books. And, you know, he's, you know he held high positions. He's very influential in wrestling. He's my friend. But being friends doesn't mean you have to write things about people because, you know, that could be bullshit. But when it comes to wrestling and, you know, going about my ability in the ring and what I accomplished, I had to earn everything I got. And when it came to WCW, because he gave me, he got me a job there, not because he gave me a job, because I earned a job and the opportunity to be a superstar. That's how I got to going. And you know what? I never, you know, took a night off. Oh, I'm Vince's buddy. Hey, Vince, you know, just give me a job match. Hey, Vince. No, give me every match. I'll work every day. I'll do whatever you want. I just want to wrestle. Now, you're talking about as far as writing and Vince writing things for you. And he, you know, he 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 wrote the big, ca well, he wrote things for the character Big Vito, which anybody that knows you in real life knows you're pretty much Big Vito in and out of the ring. Right. Here's the thing. Did you ever think that you got pigeonholed by the writing? Did you ever think that, you know, you have this gimmick where the, you have this like Italian mobster tough guy gimmick. Did you ever feel like you were trapped inside of that gimmick and it gave you a bit of a glass ceiling? Like you couldn't go with that gimmick. You could only go so far and not get around it. Did you feel like you had more of a basis with the Skull Von Crush? Like, did you feel pigeonholed by Big Vito? Not at all. When it came to my wrestling ability and what I could do in the ring, I always knew, and I said this on numerous interviews and numerous times, I could be a tag team champion, hardcore champion, U.S. champion, um, TV champion, everything. With the right opportunity, I could have been world champion that's not saying i'm better than anybody it's not saying that you know i deserved more than anybody it, i'm just saying because i'm wrestling ability and how i was perceived on wrestling if anybody goes back to wcw when you listen to the announcers there was never a bad announced team or anybody say anything negative about me everything they said i backed up every time and i truly believe and you could probably ask a lot of wrestlers. Some people were jealous. Some people didn't like my worth ethic, didn't like the fact that I took it too seriously. But when it came to wrestling me, you knew you were going to work. And that's the way I like you it. You mean work, work ethic? Mm hmm oh, Work ethic. Okay. So, <laughs> I like your smile. Do it again. You get a little smile. Worth ethic. That's what you say. <laughs> worth ethic. But it's the truth, guys. And you know what? When you're coming up like that, you know, and... What people don't realize is when I was in ECW, okay, I had to make a life-changing decision. And this is the truth, not a lie, okay? I was in a situation in my life where I was, I just came back from old Japan. I was riding a high. I still didn't have a job. I just did three years in Puerto Rico and needed to move forward. Not only in my wrestling career, but in my personal life. And I needed to take a step. And I said, you know what? I had enough of the situation that I was in. Big decision. I lived in my Jeep. I worked as a bouncer. I had, you know, I was going from to take showers at the gym, to going to sleep at the, my, my truck, to hopefully getting a, a couch to sleep on. I was 
homeless dad. So you were you were very literally homeless. You had nowhere to go. Had nowhere to go. And you stayed in your car. Stayed in my car two weeks in. The, in and you the, were an ECW at the time, right? I, this is um, before I got to ECW. This was the start of it. I said, that's it. I had it. It was the dead of winter. It was minus 20. I didn't care. I packed four bags, took all my clothes, all my stuff, and I hit the bricks. And everybody said, Vito, why? I said, I have to. I have Did you have a rag top, Jeep? Yeah, it was no hard top. People. So you were in New York and Staten Island in a rag top Jeep in the winter. What year was this? Do you remember? 97? 98. 98. Yeah. I was going to say 98 and 97 were both very, very cold, bad winters. So <laughs> I'm just just yeah, thinking but, back because I was you still want in to change, You really don't care what the situation is. You just need to change. And what people realize is that I went to ECW and I changed my ways. You know what I mean? To being able to eat humble pie. I wasn't a humble guy. I knew I was good. I was bad. I, and I knew it. Everybody else knew it. But do you know what? When it comes to saying, okay, Vito, we know you're good. You don't have to tell it, but like, you know, you got to like, you know, play ball with everybody. So, I mean, that's what it was. Okay. So let's get back. Let's, let's track back to WCW. So let's do it. We're tracking back. There's a hurricane back there. We're tracking back up. Right. Okay. So you were in WCW at kind of a difficult and weird time um, because there was change in ownership. There was question about change in ownership. They changed bookers a lot. Do you think Vince Russo got a fair shake in WCW? He wasn't there as long as people think he was. If they would have left him alone and let him be, WCW would still be open today. You believe that fully? Truly, wholeheartedly. Everybody would still have a job. I'd probably be working behind the scenes. I might have some kind of office job. I Maybe I'd still be working as a talent man, being a manager. But I'd, I would have a job in wrestling if WCW was open. Truth. But do you feel that now that you are not a wrestler on a day-to-day -day basis? Right. Do you feel like your life is better and more complete being Vito Joseph Lagrasso or being Big Vito Skull Von Crush, whatever have you? My life is settled. My life is everything I wanted it to be. Once you get rid of some of the outside stuff that holds you back and you know where your you know what your game plan is, you have your priorities set straight. You know what you want, how to get it, how to handle it, maturity level, you know? And when you talk about making decisions about your life, hey, being a bachelor, hey, it's all great, you know, it's great. If you think about yourself, worry about yourself, you know, you might have, you know, you might have company, you might not have company, you go do your thing, you go to the gym, you work out, you do stuff. Company, what do you mean by company? Do company. You mean, do you mean like company? Company. Like company? Do you mean like this, like company? <laughs> Do you want me to whisper it in your good ear? No, no it's okay. Notice, <laughs> notice how she, maturity level, I have company. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing about you and I. You have a maturity level that I do not have. I have like zero on the maturity level scale. Like none, like nothing. Like I'm seriously 12 years old. It's just the way it is. I may be in an older person's body, but in here, it's very young. Right. So, so when you say company, I like to think of it as like that. Companionship, <laughs> ladies, plenty of ladies. Now, here's the other thing. See? See, you say things so like overly structured, like company, ladies of the evening, like things of this nature, like love nest. I hate when you say love nest. Because that's the polite way to say it. But this isn't a polite show. This but is this a show is on a wrestling network. But what you don't understand, and I'm trying to let people know, this is how I've changed my way. I don't like to talk vulgar. I don't like to curse. I like being peaceful. I'm not wanting you to be vulgar. I'm wanting you to keep it real. I am keeping it real. Keep it straight, son. I'm giving it to your hoodie style. Do you think Tupac would ever say, I'm in my love nest with my lady? Or would he be like, I was banging my bitch? Think about it. 
What would Tupac do? I got my hose over. Yeah, see, better. Yeah. Be more got Tupac. my hose over. Yeah, son. Be more, <laughs> be more Tupac, a little less corporate. All right. Listen, we know I was a bachelor, yo. You know, I have my Cadillac. Yo. <laughs> I have white Zen in the fridge. Yo. All right. We had dinners, lattes, jazz night. You're family. No dancing, plenty of dancing, clubbing. Somebody blowing up my phone. But anyway. Who's blowing up? Let's keep that aside, baby. <laughs> you don't need to know my hoage. I need to know your hoage. No, we don't need to. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, like you're saying, you, you find that being Vito Joseph Lagrasso yes. is more complete than being Big Vito. Just Big, 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 Big. Vito Joseph Lagrasso, the entrepreneur, gentleman, Family man, good husband. You are a good husband. You're a very but good husband. We're totally back trailing off but again. This is what you, you strive for. This is what, like, when you start out, like, you you have, a, you say, I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. I'm going to be a ball player. I'm going to be this. None of that happened. Everything went backwards. You know what I mean? So you talk about, I mean, you're going to be a pro athlete, but you didn't know what kind of pro athlete. So here we have it. You know, 30-something years later, and I was somebody completely different. I was this rough, tough, aggressive, tough as nails, you know, head of cement, angry, um, temper, uh, always on. You talk about never having, you know, friends weren't the priority. Wrestling was priority. I was just in a bad cycle, you know what I mean? And, like, I had it. And if I could have... Juggled it better, like every pro wrestler who's been there. I'm not talking about presently, but before, right? You talk about, but that was the lifestyle you live. Wrestling, wrestling, right? Got to get on the bed, got to go, got to wash my clothes, got to see you. That was just the way it was. It, it's not today. Today, I have a complete life. I have a beautiful home. I have beautiful things. I have wonderful friends. I have a, I have a gorgeous, lovely wife. I have... Great, you know, great things in my life. The last five years have done it without wrestling. You know what I mean? So and when you concentrate on making it to that, you talk about, okay, you've come a long way, baby, and you made it. It's good because I, I found that when wrestling was a very important part of our lives, we definitely kind of just lived by the seat of our pants. We just kind of went and did things and ran around and... And lived here, lived there, did the, the, but now like we have like a nice like life that I enjoy. And you're living your second childhood right now, which like we always joke because Vince calls us children because we go to Disney World all the time. So where was but. I this morning, guys? I was out playing softball. I was out there on the field. I was by myself training. He was getting his pre-hurricane softball in. Yeah. And then he, 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 he did that. And when it rained started from the hurricane, he went to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> we're totally back off the subject. We are so trailing on this show today. I think we're concerned about the weather. Am I concerned about the weather? Yes. Well, you have some more questions? Yes, I do have some more questions. Yes, because we haven't even talked about the topic really at all. Uh, WCW was a weird place then. What? You had... they With you, it was kind of complicated because... You were tag team with Johnny. You weren't a tag team with Johnny. You were tag team with Johnny. You weren't a tag team with Johnny. Uh, your brother Reno came in. You were with Reno. You, you were against Reno. You were with Reno. Then they put you on a singles thing. Now you're helping Goldberg. Did you feel like you didn't have a certain direction? Did you feel like you had a certain um, like well, direction? One, or did thing, one thing you're forgetting is I had a singles run and I was hardcore champion. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You You... After you did these back and forth with tag teams and then you are hardcore champion, did you feel like that you lacked direction in the company at that point? I was bounced around a lot. And because of management change and everything changing, you know, I was up on the card, down on the card, up on the card, the middle of the card, and around the card. So, I mean. You were all over the place. I was all over the place. But if we would have kept with the plan, you know, with the Vince Russo plan and what what he had, his vision of what I was supposed to be. Well, what was what was supposed to be your 
singles push that got kind of derailed because things changed. I can't I can't say that I, I there was a plan, but the momentum I had, I was I was a hair away from being a main event guy. Because of the crowd reaction, because of how I wrestled, because of how I looked, how, how the announcers broadcast me. You were wrestling the top guys in the company like right. Kevin Nash and you had you, you did Steiner and Jeff yeah. Jarrett and these guys were all in the main event and then here you were just at the cusp. Did you feel like there was a glass ceiling as far as guys yeah. not letting go of positions? I just think it had to do with the whirlwind of change and if there wasn't change, we'd be sitting here talking a different tune right now. Probably we would be. We would be. Um, my other question would be, who killed WCW? In your opinion... A lot of people want to say Russo, which people that are in the know don't say that. People people that want to find that a scapegoat say that or Mark say that. want to know who killed WCW, guys? I'm going to tell you. It was everybody who had their hand in the pot who was stirring the brew that led to the demise of WCW because nobody could just let one guy run the ship. Just true. So it was a little bit of everything combined, but it wasn't, it's put on Vince's door. And do you agree with me that it's like a scapegoat thing to put it on Vince's door to just yeah, say, that's the guy? they're still talking about it 20 years later. They're still blaming him. What are you blaming him for? You're going to blame him for world peace. You're going to blame him for this. You're going to blame him for the storm. You're going to blame him for you a winter storm. How do you blame someone for world they peace? They blame Vince <laughs> for everything. They do. They do. So... You get in the ring with Goldberg. Tell me, because on a personal level, you've told me what it's like to stand in the ring when Goldberg comes out. Tell people what it's like to actually experience that Goldberg at the height of Goldberg. You're talking about like you get the roar of the crowd. He comes out, it comes out like three decimals louder. It was like the Hulk Hogan of our company coming out when Hulk Hogan was on top. And you even get goosebumps when you're standing there. And you know, as soon as he hits the ring, it's go time. And you better make it look good. And I didn't, if you, anybody ever seen the match with me and Goldberg, you know, everybody would say, how oh, you're going to freeze, you're going to do it. No. If you watched, if I would have had a longer time, a longer match, would have been a better match than what it was. But it wasn't in the program or in the cards for me to do that at the time, you know, because everybody was doing it. And you know what? I told him, I said, I can have a good match with Goldberg. Just give me the time. Just give me the time. And I, and I fought for everything I had to get. And it wasn't that they didn't think I could do it. It's just that the way things were were just so misconstrued. And I wish that if they just would have left things alone, things would have been a lot different. Yeah. My legacy would be different. My, I could have achieved more in WCW, but I'm not bitter. I had the opportunity and I went from being homeless to being world champion, to being tag team champion. And I had a great home, and I had a new car, and I had great paychecks, and I was living the life of a rock star. Can't ask me anything more. And how many people get to do that in their lives? How many times did Bill DeMott job to Goldberg? Five. Five times. Five times. Five times. And he was the first in the line, and they kept chopping him out. Before, I know he gets mad if you say but something. But you know what, guys? When you do a good job and you make the other guy look good and you can do that, they will ask you to always, there will always be a job for you. I've worked for every company in the world. When you know how to wrestle and you can work and you can make anybody look good, there will always be a job for you. So you're in the ring with Goldberg. It's a very exciting thing. Vince is in the ring. Did you guys take a moment to like look at each other and go, wow, we've come a long way from Johnny Rods' school? Or you just got, we're so wrapped up in this whole thing? I just think it was just a moment. Like, you know, we didn't think about where we came from. We think about, hey, that's what we're doing today. And it was about today. Tell me about the first, the first time that Vince managed you. Because there's, there's a bit of controversy, and I know this tape is out there, and I think Russo has it, and he's kayfaving. So. Russo does have the tape. He's and, kayfaving, uh, right? Yeah. I totally think he is. I think we should pressure him in some type of rally to so, show the video. Here it is, guys. Vince is, Vince is very young in the business. He wanted to be a manager. Comes to be my manager, right? 
We were friends. I said, okay, Vince. And you were Skull Von Crush then? I was Skull Von Crush, and I broke Vince Russo in the business. True story. Vince will admit to that part. That he admits to. But when he had his orange bat, (laughs) and it was aluminum, and he hit me with the bat, and he hit me directly in the skull. And he was your manager. My manager. And he hit you with his bat. He always carried that. Very hard. And Vince admits he was your manager. He admits he maybe hit you with the bat. He knows he did. But he denies that he has the tape of this. And he's the only one that would have it. He's got it. He's got it in triplicate, 50 kits, 100 kits. He's got millions of He tape. probably has screenshots on his desktop probably. from the tape. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> he does. So I think that maybe we should start some type of like petition to get Vince to show this tape. No, Vince is a j I'll say it here on the show. He's a j Was well, Vince ca- happy to carry out the ring? Because he looked like he was holding on for dear life, and he totally looked like he sandbagged. So well, uh, My answer to that is I got him back for the bat shot. <laughs> and then you guys buried him in the desert. So, I mean, there's that. Okay, so here's everybody's favorite part of the show except for mine. Road stories with Big Vito, how to pick up chicks with Big Vito, whatever you want to call it, hit the music. All right. I want to know, I want you to tell a Vince and you story about hookups or sexual events, because Vince told me about one on another show where you went to somebody's house. We had a, we, we were doing the bar mitzvah, famous bar mitzvah, German at a bar mitzvah, and we were with a, a very nice lady named Vicky. Did Vince book this? Vince booked it. I knew it. <laughs> Vince booked it. Okay, go ahead. So, um, we actually went to, to the lady's house, she made us dinner, and then I left because I had to get going, and then there was milk, there were tits. Wait. Russo tells the story like you didn't get going, like you were there for the the sticky Vicky I shower. Didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't get it, but somebody else did. But were you there to witness it? No, I wasn't there to witness it. No, honestly, truly, I was I not there. Swear on, I don't know, Bruiser. Swear on Bruiser. Swear on myself. Your cell phone's all beat up. It's holy, come on. Let me tell you something, guys. We get new cell phones at the same time, okay? Same time we get uh, iPhones, all right? So we both got the same. I have a different cover on now. We even had the same cover, but mine's different now. I changed it. So Vito has the same phone as me. Vito, can you please show the people your phone and I'll show them mine? You see how mine is all nice and there's nothing on that? And it's like, look, there's no cracks in my screen. It's all perfect. I showed you. Okay. Let's not make a big Vito's is destroyed. And we just got these a couple months ago, and Vito's phone is already cracked in a million pieces. Were you taking it off? No, it's Take hot. it off. Hot sweat. Take hot it off. I turned the air on for you. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about sticky Vicky? Can you tell another hookup story since you didn't do the you know the It really wasn't much of a hookup story. You know, Vince wasn't a partier, but Vince did love his divas in the WWE. Who is Vince's favorite diva? I know, I know. Sable. <laughs> he loves Sable. You what? And Sable, and this is not saying anything bad or disgusting or anything like that. It was with total respect, but she was a very beautiful, and probably is, I haven't seen in a while, a very beautiful, beautiful lady. And she was at the height of her career, and Vince enjoyed working with her. She was very nice. She was very professional. And Vince just had, you know, he had a crush on her. Okay, okay, can I be honest with you about Sable? And I'm not being disrespectful in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so I have big boobs, right? Everybody knows that they're always out of big boobs. Sable's boobs look like they hurt. Because she doesn't have, her boobs aren't real. She's very open about that. Her boobs aren't real. Yeah. When women have boobs that big and they're not like God-given boobs that big, they look like her skin is about to rip. Like, these are mine. Like, I've, I've always, I've had these boobs since I was 12. I, I really don't know because the only time I was around Sable was when she was married to Mark Merrill in WCW. Mm. That's the truth. And we were friends. 
I was friends with Mark, I was friends with Savon, I was friends with their daughter. So anything I could possibly say was a long time ago. She was very respectful, very nice lady. Mark was a great guy. They always enjoyed my company. So I enjoyed theirs, and that's really true. Okay, is there anything else that you'd like to say to to spice up the show? Because you didn't give us any like deep. Now, you know what I'm going to say to spice up the show? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We're coming on strong. We got an announcement this week with Vince Russo. Okay. And hopefully we get to make that announcement. Right now we're going to deal with the storm. If you want to catch us, catch us on the Big Vito brand at thebigvito.com or the Big Vito at the Big Vito brand, twitch.com slash dot. Okay, here's, here's the thing. Don't listen to him because he thought World Wide Web was not World Wide Web. He thought WWW was World Wrestling Wide. So go to thebigvetobrand.com. <laughs> go to twitch.tv slash thebigvetobrand.com. Please subscribe. If you're a subscriber to Vince Russo on Twitch, subscribing to us is free when you have Prime. So go ahead, click the subscribe button. We have a lot more videos. We're going to start doing lives from Disney. We're going to do podcasts from Disney soon. Yeah. Uh, we have a new podcast called Unboxing, where we try different foods from around the world. And we go to Epcot and try different foods there. And it's Food and Wine Festival. So we're yeah, going to be trying more stuff. We've got a lot of things coming up. We've got a lot of things happening. So just check us out. You know, this is Big Vito with Noel signing off. Deuces. We didn't finish the show yet, baby. Okay, you on. just cut me off completely. I know. He did that on purpose. Okay, when you want to catch Vito on um, line, on social media, it's the Big Vito brand. I have a new name. Oh. I am at Magical Tea Spiller because I'm done with reality. I'm just going to go with the magic from now on. So I'm Magic Tea Spiller. That's me. Now, this is what we're going to talk about on next week, This Week in Pro Wrestling History. <laughs> He's a Smackdown, September 9th, 2006. The toughest man to wear a dress, Big Vito defeats Sir William Regal on Smackdown. Vito deep into his undefeated streak feuded with Regal on the Smackdown League. Next week, we're going to talk about Vito's feud with Regal and what led to the first ever and only ever male frontal nudity shot in WWE history. All this next week. Should be a good time and a good topic. Am I right? Good to be back. If we... Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. If we don't get blown away by the hurricane, we'll be back here next week for this week in pro wrestling history. Bye.